Hello everyone, we're just getting set up here. Give me a moment. And here we are. Hello everyone, I'm Team Veritas and I am joined with GM Andrasite. Hi. <laughs> Oh, ah, we lost our chat. Where'd our chat go? No. Come back, chat. There is. Uh, so, as you'll notice, I am not GM Jello Shaker. GM Jello Shaker is off having a really awesome time somewhere. From what I could saw, she found a certain Impala this weekend. I'm very jealous of her right now. But, it we, you have us, and we will be going over some of the stuff we've been working on, on our, I should say mostly, Andersite, she's done a lot of work. I've cut stuff. I have cut and sewn and together. Sewed. I've sewn things, but uh, she's she's doing it pretty well. Um, so uh, for those who don't know, we are building the. Uh, they're not called bat wings, but I'm forever going to call them bat wings because they look like bat wings. <laughs> and uh, we're making RO2 versions of the Ragnarok Online One Evil Wing headgear. And we are changing it up because in RO2 you can get those red and black, really awesome black uh, back wings. They're cool, they're all mm. batty and sinister looking. But uh, we don't have those as headgear, so uh, this is what will be hopefully um, on the screen. You can see what's what's been done so far in this lovely, lovely. Aren't they cool? Thing. Yay! So I think the plan eventually was for the headgear. We want to take this bat wing and attach it to the headband um, via this strip right here. And um, this is something that is not too hard to do. Um, it's, uh, it can be applied for a variety of things like ears. That's probably what the simplest thing you can do is try to make a pair of rabbit ears, for example, cat ears. Um, and I believe it's a little more straighter than just clipping to your hair. Yeah. Sometimes the clips can slide around and stuff like that. So headbands are a really great alternative. Um, the one thing about this though, it's kind of hard to find patterns mm -hmm. if you are using exclusively um, patterns that are bought from the store. So I would recommend at least learning some simple pattern making, mm -hmm. which if we have time or people show enough of interest, maybe we can do that. Well, um, you could go over it a little bit here. Yeah. We have an hour. Okay. <laughs> well, here are the pattern pieces that I made this for this. So we can see you as well. Okay. <laughs> um, so these are the pattern pieces I made for this project. I made them from scratch. There's no um, pattern I bought from the store that helped me out at all. Um, so we have the wing pieces right here. And then this is the outer portion of the wing, so the joints is what I've been kind of calling them. Um, depending on what you're making for pattern pieces, um, depends on how you really need to start. There are very specific ways to make such, for example, shirts or pants or something like that. For the bat wings exclusive, uh, for the bat wings and any other kind of odd shaped things like this, I kind of combine the pattern making techniques that I learned from sewing and mm -hmm. then with drawing. There's a lot of sketching, you kind of have to do some guesswork mm -hmm. and um, after that kind of make things, even stuff out. Mm -hmm. such as for the bat wings, the curves. I had to even out these curves, as well as um, just any sort of angles. I had to even them out and make sure that they were going to be symmetrical. But um, it's kind of a long process, so <laughs> I won't go too far into it right now because it's also very technical and mm -hmm. requires a lot of measuring and <laughs> redrawing and erasing if there's um, any sort of issue. So right now, I think I'll just be working on the actual bat wing that we have done right now because there's still a few more things that need to be done. Um, like I said, I'm going to be taking it and attaching it to the headband. And how I usually do this with any sort of ear is you use some wire. There's a lot of different types of wire you can use. Um, if you go to any sort of craft store, there's jewelry wire, which is what I have in my hand right now. There's different gauges, so depending on how heavy or how intricate your headgear is going to be, or ears or whatever, mm -hmm. you may want to buy a thicker gauge wire. This one's 18 gauge, mm -hmm. so it's pretty, pretty thick. Um, you can also use, though, if you're on a budget. I've done a lot of budget cosplay in my lifetime because I've been a broke, starving college student. Um, you can use wire hangers 
you have any you don't need to use, you can yeah. recycle those. Um, they work pretty well. Um, so what I'll be using this uh, wire for is to be running it up through these bat wings, more than likely down this bottom side and up through the top a little bit, and also through this black part that you see is pinned on that hasn't been quite sewn yet. Mm -hmm. um, so one, the top part can have shape and form, and you can also adjust them. So if you need to be more curvy, like in this part, you can adjust it to curve to your liking and same with the ends if you want to curve it down more you want to curve it out more then it's adjustable mm -hmm. again this one is more just aesthetics than anything um, the two down here are going to be more for function uh, as well as aesthetics we're going to make it so that these points point out a bit more because right now you can see they're not too pointy and that has to that do that's due to the fact of we need to iron it a bit better <laughs> i need to iron it a bit better and also we need to point out the points more so the wire will help with that definitely. And the wire's second function would be as we run it down along here, we're going to wrap this portion around and then hook it onto here and we're gonna use the wire for that. Um, to make it a little more stable, depending on how stable it is after here, I may actually make a cover for this headband so that we can attach it to the cover as well that way it doesn't slip and slide down around on the headband because it could do that since this is a bigger headpiece we want to avoid moving like mm -hmm. in this direction because then that's a pain you have to stop you have to take off your headgear and you have to adjust it again to fit your needs yeah so hopefully oh, we can prevent a lot also, of that i do want to so so you can get kind of a closer look can you see this so this is the one that she was talking about um it's just Jewelry wires. Jewelry wire. So you'd just usually use it for like necklaces, bracelets, anything like that, but it's very handy in cosplay, as you can see. So my first thing I'm going to do is since my sewing machine didn't like me, there's a small hole here. I don't know if you can see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start patching that up just so that there isn't a hole in the back and it doesn't look messy and sad. So I'm just going to hand stitch that for now. Uh, okay. Yay, Team Dragon Lark. Dragon wings. Dragon wings? That I, I, you can call them dragon wings, I guess. If you want. Maybe we can uh, make actual dragon wings. Sometimes. Ooh, we should do that. We should make dragon wings. Ooh. So, um... Oh, look, someone in, in the game is making comments. Oh. I will have to take care of him later. Okay. <laughs> Oh, but, uh, oh, so I am in game right now just because, you know, I, I do handle RO2 and Requiem, and this is for an RO2 costume. So I am currently hidden in Prontera if anyone wants to hunt, find me or hang out with me. I'm not in the middle of the town square this time, though. I'm not far. I'm not far. I'm just hanging out. So. so go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I wanted to point out that in all the years that I've ever done any sewing, I did not know about this nifty stuff, and she just showed me this not too long ago. It was beeswax, right? Yes. Beeswax, and it makes handling string so much easier that I now look back at the last 20 years of my life and go, where the hell have you been all my life? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so the purpose for beeswax, it's very helpful, I find, in hand sewing, which is what's primarily used in. You coat the thread in this beeswax there's these little slots right here so you'll put them in the slots and run them through there as much as you need to and the beeswax will coat the thread and actually prevent it from tangling and knotting up while you're doing your hand stitching which is very nice so i'm a master of that <laughs> i think we all are at some point that's that's one hard thing to prevent I'm but the ma beeswax it helps really all right cool I thought you were holding a Pokeball for a second. <laughs> I mean, it does, I can understand the red and all, but, you know. It does kind of look like a Pokeball. If yeah. You just, if you're just blinking. That'd be cool. We could have Pokeballs. Poke, poke balls, Pokeball, RT Pokeball. We can all be... Hey, if I could catch porings with a Pokeball, that'd be amazing. That would be amazing. Can we but have... You can have porn pets. This is true. I can have a porn pet. I don't have a porn pet. I want a porn pet now. Get it. My GM needs a pouring pet. I think everyone needs a pouring pet. I agree. I think we should just start handing out pouring pets all over. All day, every day. All the time. I'm just going to 
put this somewhere in the stream because to be adorable. To be adorable. I've got to find a spot where you it's can covered. all see him. Oh, wait, wait, we'll go this way. There we go. See? Because this thing is cute. So as far as hand stitching, there's a couple different techniques I can think of that may help um, with this small hole that we have in the back of the bat wing. Uh, the one I am going to be using, though, is, uh, I forget what it's called. I think it's a slip stitch. Sorry, it's been such a long time since I've been in actual former, formal, formal fashion classes. What we're going to do, I'll show you on this um, piece of muslin, is we're going to go to the back, the, so the wrong side of the fabric, and that's where we're going to start our stitch. So this thread's already ready. There's a knot at the end. It's been ran through the beeswax. And we're going to have it so the knot goes into the back here. Now, well, I mean, if it actually wanted to stay. <laughs> Sometimes the knots just do not stay. I notice our boom is in the way. Oh, Can I hide it? it? No, there's really no easy way to hide this. this. Oops. Prototype. It's kind of over there. There. We'll move it there. there we go. Maybe. Let me cut is that better? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm a little all over the place today. Oh no, it's Monday. I think we all. It's the Monday after daylight savings time. Oh goodness, yes. Uh, yeah, so who else out there has discovered the glory of going, oh my gosh, it's 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm still not asleep. Why am I still not asleep? <laughs> oh yeah, that's why. That's why. <laughs> that may or may not have been me reading comics at night going, why am I still awake? <laughs> <laughs> so for the, um, the demonstration for this particular stitch, I'm going to do a slightly different um, it's not going to be quite the same as patching up the hole, but um, this stitch is very um, useful for if you need to do a hand stitch hem. But the one reason why I do want to use it on this bat wing is so that it hides the thread. You won't be able to see the thread. Okay. Um, even though it's still the same color, I like to make it as um, invisible as possible so people don't really see, oh, well, I kind of messed up. Oops. So what we're going to do, we're going to pretend like we're sewing a hem. I have folded over this piece of fabric to look like we're going to be hemming something. Um, you're going to take the needle and you're going to do your first stitch right underneath where the hem is going to be just so you can have your knot there. So I'm just going to put it right here, the knot through, or not through, but put the knot there. You're going to fold the hem back over and what you're going to do is you can push it, um, you're going to push it so that it's hard to see. but. You're just going to take a couple of threads from underneath. Uh, that way it limits the amount of um, thread that actually shows out. And with the same color fabric, same color thread, you're barely going to notice anything at all, especially from a long distance. Ooh. So you're going to do it for the underneath part as well as the top part that you want to stitch down. So for this case, it's going to be the hem. Sorry, this is going to be a little harder to see. But you're going to take just a couple pieces and then go back through. So that way, if you can see, since this is a different color fabric, there's only about like a minuscule, a minuscule amount of thread showing. But it's still a sturdy stitch, so it's going to hold everything together. Sweet! So I'm going to cut that for now so I can start working on the bat wing and patching that up. Ooh. All the things. You see our messy room in the back. <laughs> um, maybe since... Um, there's maybe not everyone knows about what we're doing for this uh, cosplay, what we're trying to achieve. Oh, um, yes. That probably we have a project ongoing right now that Ver um, Veritas started for RO2, which is why we're making this. Yes. So um, for those who have not been um, keeping up on our RO2 live stream, uh, what we are doing is we are making headgear to wear to WonderCon. Or at least I'm going to wear it to WonderCon. WonderCon! <laughs> and then possibly, uh, you know, Andresite can wear some stuff to, uh, to, to uh, Anime Expo. Yes, 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 yes. I yes. will be attending Anime Expo for sure. So <laughs> as long as I can get all this stuff done, I will definitely be in costume. Um, right now, I am in the process of making a cosplay for the long distance Ooh. Kafra, uh flying. Yes, it'll be awesome. So I am in talks with some people because 
I do not have all the necessary skills to create the outfit perfectly. I can do the sewing of the costume and I can make the headgear, but I am in talks with somebody to possibly make the broom. Sweet. I am bad with pop props. I will admit it right now. I can't do prop making and I can't do armor making, which is two things I am practicing right now. So in lieu of me making the prop, the broom in this case, I am asking a friend to see if they can do it. Awesome. Afterwards, if it works out and everything turns out great, I will see about maybe we can bring it in, show you guys, see if you like it or not. That'll be awesome. Does the person making it mind if you name who it is? I'm not sure, which is why okay. I'm keeping it All on right. the down low right now. If she if she doesn't mind us from, um, mentioning her name, then I will be more than happy to share it. Yeah, no, I think it'd be, uh, you know, awesome, because then you got, if you guys are interested or you like the stuff, you know. She does take commissions, so yeah. if she's if she's fine with that, I will ask her and see, and if she is, I will let you know. She is based in the SoCal area, though, so if you're not in SoCal, I'm not sure if she does commissions outside of the city mm -hmm. or general area. All right. Well, I know, so for those who don't know, we um continuing on that thought, so we'll, I will be going to WonderCon at the end of the month. Um, looks like it'll most likely be on a Friday. Um, if you can find me, I will have some free stuff to hand out to you if you want to. Um, you can go ahead and just meet up and take pictures and plaster them all over Warp Portal. Please don't throw things at me. That'd be horrible. Or we could play catch. I guess there's that too. Pouring catch. Pouring so catch. Pouring. That would be awesome. I should carry around a pouring. I need a pouring, and then I could throw. Then we could literally play pouring catch. I could throw pourings at everybody. Ah, that's a great idea. Now I need lots of pourings. But um, yeah, so we're doing this because I think thought it would be fun and kind of hilarious to run around and uh, you know show off RO2. Ideally, when we get to the end of this entire mess, I'll have an uh, entire costume. But I'm looking for red pants at the moment. <laughs> it's hot. So, but, um, oh. Someone ran by. I didn't get to say hi. Oh, no. Hi. I say hi in game. Uh, but, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, so it's, I'll be wearing my GM costume. I don't know if any, anyone has noticed or seen me. I do wear, um, I'm GM Verat. I, I run around. That's a character I use when I'm on RO2 Live. So I thought it would be amusing and hilarious to wear the costume that my little avatar wears. Because it looks comfortable. It looks nice. Yeah, it's got kind of a little, uh, a little shirt thingy. Um, so what I did recently is I did cut out some patterns for at least the vest. That far I got. And I'm not as cool as GM Andresite, so uh, mine came out of a simplicity thing. Hey, that is also another valid way to make cosplay. <laughs> no, no, nothing wrong with taking a pattern. I should have grabbed that before. Please excuse us while we grab more items. Yeah, we're going to pull it all out. So, um, what I'm using for this, Oda is on chat. Howdy, Oda. Hello, Oda. Uh, so I'm going to hide this in, in this corner. That's perfectly okay. There if you want to explain what you're doing with that. Then so right here, what I'm taking, because uh, as you'll notice, this is, uh, you know, it's a historical costume thing, but it's my, my, uh, my caliber of sewing simplicity, as you will notice. <laughs> the patterns are good, though. They are. I like them, and they're so simple. You can edit them easy without going, oh, my God, what the hell did I do? Um, I will be actually pulling the vest up off of this thing to make this interesting, uh, like he has kind of a, a strange vest and I'm going to have to add in some, uh, uh, the little flaps. So it's kind of like the jacket. So if you, I don't know if you can tell on here. So the 1700s jackets had that same kind of design on them with the little flap that goes back and you have the buttons going down. So there's kind of like having to pull various elements from this. Um, for anyone who's not ever purchased a Simplicity costume, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out so you can check it out. 
and take up all this space. So this is for the vest itself. As you can see, it's, I'm always afraid that I'm going to tear these apart because they are literally tissue paper. But, uh, so let me pull this out so you, can, you guys can at least see what... So there's this pattern, and this is the vest front. So just to give an idea, it kind of goes like this. And we already know we're going to have to make some edits to this as well. Uh, so it'll go down here, but the original GM costume kind of, I guess, curves out, I'm noticing. Where it does like this weird little curvy thing, and it has a cut in the back. What is Oda's cosplay going to be? That would be nice if Oda would, would cosplay too. That'd be cool. If you guys have any possible recommendations, throw them our way. Maybe Oda will actually like to do a cosplayer. Me? Yeah, that'd be awesome. We can convince him. I believe. I believe. I believe so. Oh, and then for, uh, let's continue the trend. This is the jacket back. So, ideally, how this is all going to... I, I folded this up and I probably shouldn't have done that. This will make up one side. I can pull this mess out so you can all see kind of I, how this would go together. There we go. So you kind of go together like this. You know, there's a place for the, the, the arms and all this stuff. And the great thing is if you go ahead and you buy these uh, you can use it for all kinds of stuff, really. If you want to make yourself a nice uh, Castlevania costume, dress up as Olicard. Another great thing you can do, if you want, instead of um, doing make adjustments, you would like to save those patterns for later without the adjustments. You can also copy those patterns onto another piece of paper, such as hmm. other pattern paper. Um, what else works? I would highly recommend getting other pattern paper. They sell it by the rolls. You can get it on almost any online store. Mm -hmm. um, you can copy onto there and then make your adjustments there and save the original pattern for later. That is true. Which is that nice. would be smart. <laughs> that would be a smart choice. While we're on the topic of patterns, that this is true. something I need to do. Um, when I do tend to make my own patterns, as you see, um, after the patterns are done, they're usually just on paper like this to extend the life of your patterns. Um, it's better if you laminate them. And if you don't have access to some sort of fancy lamination machine, and I don't really have one, so I don't know how the process works, you can just take tape. And even though it sounds like a really like off fix, it works very well. Just take some clear scotch tape, and even though it does take a lot of tape to finish it, just mm -hmm. put it on both sides front and then do it on the back as well and it uh, saves your patterns nice. just as well. So yeah, you I know. can use it for multiple, multiple uses. Yeah, I have, I remember seeing like if you go to like Walmart or Walmart, Walmart or um, some, uh, some stores will have like the, the big old sheets of like the two-sided paper so you could do that. I should probably copy this onto something. Oh, and just for anyone who, you know, gets worried when they see, don't worry, the great thing about simplicity patterns is they come with these. Okay, this is the Spanish one, so um, yay for Spanish speakers. They do come in a multitude of languages, which yeah. is very nice. But this is why I love simplicity, because their patterns are great for newbies or just someone who doesn't want to spend a lot of time sewing. They come with instructions, lots and lots of instructions. But as the, the name kind of suggests, it is a um, simplified pattern, so it's nothing crazy like if you were going to get, say, a Vogue pattern where things can get incredibly complicated and there's different stitches and seams you may not know how to do and they might specifically request you to do that type of uh, work. Simplicity will do otherwise. It makes it as simple yeah. as possible. Yeah, so, you know, for anyone who's ever been, like, afraid, I find that these are lifesavers. Because I know that sewing, for a lot of people, can be kind of a scary thing to just jump into. But, I mean, I've been looking online, and there's a lot of 
you know, really great simple sewing machines for like a hundred bucks. I know that uh, Amazon always seems to have them on sale. And then if once you get better, you can upgrade to one of those nicer, huge, you know, four hundred dollar ones that do the awesome fancy stitching. <laughs> yeah, so there's always um, places where you can buy sewing supplies cheap. Yeah. I know if you're kind of hesitant, not just with the materials, but um, doing the techniques and the sewing itself, if you're not too familiar with it, um, it can be daunting. There are a lot of online resources, especially within the cosplay community. Don't be afraid. Everyone's incredibly nice. Well, for the most part, everyone is very nice. Um, if you have questions, you can ask them. They will be more than happy to help you out with any questions, sewing questions, certain ways to make things, any uh, fabric that they would like uh, that they suggest you using for any particular project. Um, yeah. I found most people more than happy to share their experience with you. Yeah, I um, so like I have some friends and I like following the Five O First a lot, and they have just such a huge, just warehouse of resources you can go to if you're really getting into that whole uh, realism factor and then a lot of them even have um, trusted sites that you can go to to order things like I may or may not be ordering an imperial, co imperial officer's uniform <laughs> 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 but um, uh, they do have a lot of like, even patterns I notice online they actually have like patterns, you can download them, um, you can edit them to how you need to, and um, they'll actually give you resources to where you can pick up fabrics and just even like how to make the little bars, like the, what do you call them, insignia bars, so you know exactly. And it's, it always amazes me because it's always stuff like, you know, go down to your nearest home base and pick up a, or Home Depot, they don't have home base anymore. <laughs> Home Depot and pick up this, this, and this. Take out this and just glue it to this plate. And I'm always, I, I'm always crazy. Stormtrooper, two thousand cost. Yes, the stormtrooper costumes can be very expensive. But if you know people and are willing to do some of the work yourself, not that bad. There are a lot of, like I said, I think I mentioned before in um, earlier in the stream. If you look um, hard enough. I know there's a lot of people who love cosplay, but they may not have the budget to do something really nice. I am mm -hmm. included in this. Yes, um, same here. There's a lot of great budget cosplay techniques. I had a friend who um, once cosplayed a character who needed a lot of bags, like leather bags. Obviously, if you go out and try to either get leather bags custom made or try to get a leather bag that's even just similar to the size, it can add up a lot really mm -hmm. fast, especially if it's genuine leather. What she ended up doing and it's another thing that you can do if you need bags as well. She took butter, butter cartons, old really? butter cotton, cartons. She washed them out, and you can cut it into the shape you need it, and then you just cover it with fabric. I would never have thought of that. And then she attached it to a belt. It looked just, it looked the same. Oh, wow. I, I would have liked to just, so one of the things that I usually use is Goodwill is my friend. <laughs> Goodwill. Another great place to go. Goodwill is my friend because even if you can't find what you're looking for, a lot of times you can find old jackets, old bags that, you know, you unfortunately may have to rip apart to get the material off of. <laughs> but it works. <laughs> it does work. Um, I've, I know I've done that multiple times. The cosplay I did about two years ago. I needed a dress that I wasn't quite sure how to make in a pattern because I had a few features I hadn't attempted before. I did buy a dress at a Goodwill and I was able to alter it to the point where um, nice. I could make it look like the costume I wanted. Sweet, so, sweet. Oh, this is a little, a little more my style, crispy. Ooh. So there's, here's, there's a, a, a YouTube video. I'm, I'm gonna look at the, with the, watch our new Star Wars Force Awakens Sweden. Teaser. <laughs> okay, this is funny. Oh, can you all hear that now? <laughs> oh. ah, there we go. Sweated. You know what? I have to say, though for something that's literally made of oh, 
cardboard is awesome. Love the cardboard. <laughs> I totally have a robe. I have a, a Sith robe. That's my bathrobe. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was awesome. That is pretty cool. That is pretty I've cool. I've seen people do amazing things with cardboard. Dude. Even with cosplay, too. I've seen people who've done oh. Gundam cosplays. I don't know if Dude. you can find a picture and put it up, but there's Let's been see. some amazing Gundam cardboard cosplays to the point where it actually looks like, I mean, it doesn't look like metal, but it looks yeah. like they could have made it out of something like Warbla or um, foam, like the crafter's foam. Well, you know what I find hilarious? So a lot of people worry about you know, the feel and the weight and all, you know, because they want, want it to be, like, movie accurate or, or uh, what do they call it, screen accurate or something like that. And what floors me is how often people don't realize that most of the movie props are, like, made of plastic or foam and just spray painted over. And amazing paint jobs can go a long way. <laughs> they really can. It's, a, it, it's, it's, the most hilarious thing when I, I realized how simple certain things were made. Like I had a coworker who, he basically he wanted a really fancy desk for work, but obviously you don't want to afford a fancy desk. So he went out and he bought like cheap wood and cardboard, like really good grade cardboard, and cut it out and repainted. That it looked like wood. He looked like he had this badass. Oh, I wish I had pictures of it. Um, a steampunk desk and it was just cardboard and like cheap pieces of, of wood it, it wasn't anything big and I mean it was it was awesome you can get away with a lot of cool stuff like that Let's see Let's see cardboard while well, you're looking that up real quick I'm just gonna explain what I did real quick um, so right now I'm gonna be working on the outer part of the wing and what I'm going to do first is do, use that same technique that we used on the back to tuck this uh, unfinished edge under and to sew it to the to the actual wing. But instead of closing it off all the way, I am going to leave an opening here and I'm also going to leave an opening at the end. If you notice the end at the moment is just squared off, I'm going to be cutting that and making it more of a point. But the way, reason to leave these both ends open is so that we can get the wire in mm -hmm. easier and kind of funnel it through here. But the other thing I will probably do as well is take some stuffing to help keep the shape as well as have the wire in there so that you can adjust it okay. how you want it. Very cool. So I had just measured out the length of wire and cut it. Um, it's a little bent right now, but I have some tools with me. Uh, in particular, these needle nose pliers to help shape the wire better and also to bend it and to finish it off so that it's not stabbing through the fabric or anything like that. Um, any needle nose will pretty much do. I bought specific ones that are specific to um, jewelry making, but you can get a smaller pair as well that's just for like auto usage or any other mm -hmm. um, handy work around the house or anything like that. Um, I also have a separate wire cutter, but again, you can use any sort of directional wire cutter um, or directional cutters that you can use for auto or any, again, any handy projects around the house. But I believe you did find some amazing cardboard costumes. I did. I'm, 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 it's very tiny, though, so I'm trying to figure out how to get it on here. Let me see if this works. So you all might just get an eyeful of who knows what. Dude, there we go. Well, you get a, you get to see my character, so there's that. We'll move that down here so you can all just see my character, and not the crazy-ass stuff up there. All right, so I actually found this. So this looks like they did the Marvel Universe in cardboard, which is awesome. I don't know if you guys can see it on here. I hope so. It's pretty amazing. That is pretty cool. So it's I a want. Little small though. It is a little small. Let me find a better picture. I don't know if you can open up full. Yeah, that's a, that's as big as it wants oh, to be. Oh no. <laughs> I'm like, uh, that's okay. I can I can find more. I will find more because. There is some amazing, so my favorite, I gotta show this, because, I mean, who, oh wait, maybe not that one. Who doesn't love Minecraft, man? Minecraft is awesome. I just want to show off the Minecraft. 
Minecraft. Okay. <laughs> they look like Legos. They do look like, I think that's the point. They were kind of going for that box art. Oh, that one in particular? The uh, Minecraft? Oh, I think it was talking about the cardboard costume. Oh, yeah. They do yes. kind of look like Legos. Like in the style of Minecraft, too. Yes. Because it's really boxy. Do, do, do. Boxy. Oh, here's some awesome cardboard. Speaking of Legos. <laughs> this, I love this. So, some cardboard cutout Lego stuff. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> It's so cute. I'm sorry. I think it's a little creepy because they have like the dead soul stare. <laughs> like they're staring into my soul. Maybe a little bit. Tiny bit. Stop uh, showing us scary things. One of these days. I got. I wish I had a picture of that. Here's a pretty creative. Yeah. Someone dressed up as a Rubik's cube. Oh, I've seen these guys. These guys are awesome. The Tetris crew. <laughs> okay, you can't really see it there. I need to find a bigger... People need to take bigger photos. You. It's my work. I don't know who that is. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought I saw some Transformers ones. Here we go. View image. So here is a cardboard Transformers outfit that was made. Let me move this down so you can all actually see it. That is, I love this. Again, paint, duct tape is your friend. <laughs> and um, I've also seen where some, sometimes what they'll do is you use a really heavy, hard uh, cardboard, and then you can also do where you can put uh, Lego, or not Lego, ha! Ah, they look like Legos. Um, you can put the uh, wooden rods on the inside so it's a little more stable. Because as we all know, cardboard likes to not be stable. Was a cardboard transformer? They actually, yes, yes, I saw that at, uh, was it Anime Expo? Or no, I saw it at Comic Con. There was a guy dressed up. I wish I could find it. Ah, oh, this is Was awesome. it the rolling transformer by chance? It may have been the rolling transformer. I just thought it was awesome because he could fold down and everything. Yes, he actually transforms into a motorcycle, I believe. I did see him a couple years in a row. At yes! The oh, I saw that too, the motorcycle guy. Yes, and he actually had working lights as well. So That is awesome. Super kudos to that guy. He looked amazing. Yeah, and again, cardboard. Cardboard. With all the electronics added on. Right, so. LED or whatever it was that he did use. Again, that's another area that's pretty advanced and I would love to learn yeah. about, but I am not quite to that level yet. Well, you know what I have found you can use for certain things, um, depending on how bright you want it. So you know those little doll houses? Yes. So if you go to um, some craft stores or even go to hobby stores, you can buy, it's like the the wire with the tiny light at the end and it's just it's free so you can wrap it up but I highly recommend putting it in a wire wrapping it in um, shielded uh, tape because obviously that will get hot over time but you just attach it to like a little battery and it'll you can turn it on and off any particular kind of tape like um, uh, electrical, electrical tape. tape definitely electrical tape you know wrap it up in electrical tape usually you can buy the the, yes, she's got electrical tape. For whatever reason, in my sewing kit, here's some electrical tape. Oh, you always need to have electrical tape. In our household, we have electrical tape everywhere, but mostly because we have a small bunny that sometimes gets past the barriers we put up. And we have to electrical tape everything. They usually, oh, there's usually a fun solid snake box cosplay. Oh, yes! We're, okay, so this looks at solid snake box cosplay. We really need a new mouse in here. <laughs> it clicked way too loud. Solid, it, it, the best part is right next to the microphone. Oh, yes. All right. I'm All gonna, the beautiful scrolling sounds. Yes, and the clicking of my lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, here it is. Maybe that would be an excuse for us to just buy a gamer mouse. I agree. <laughs> I think that's a perfect excuse. Solid snake box. 
There's one. I believe I have seen that, that guy, or at least a guy, run around with that uh, type of cosplay at AX again. Awesome. Don't notice I like going to AX a lot. I used to go every year. Oh, wait, here's some cool stuff. <laughs> View image. Oh, let's look at this one. This guy's pretty cool. He's got the whole get up, the whole look and everything. Let's see, can I make this big? View image? Yes. This looks cool. <laughs> oh, goodness. He even has Russian writing on the side. Pretty amazing. I wonder if it's accurate. I don't know. Can anyone read Russian? I believe in the newer Model Gear Solid. Now, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's different patterns or something you can put on the side of the boxes. And if this is true, I would thoroughly enjoy any um, snake cosplays with um, those different types of cardboard. You know what boxes. I want to find? I want I want the solid snake with the dog. Oh yes. With with an actual trained dog. That would be amazing. That, ah, uh, I love that dog. So, yes, my, my greatest joy is just collecting all that. AX is getting old, or maybe I'm getting old. Chris it's, plays old. It has been around for a while. If there, Do you guys have any suggestions for any, like, new cons? Is there any new cons popping up that have been kind of cool? I've been kind of... There's, oh, so I got one on my Facebook that it's fairly, it's like NerdBot or something. I'm going to turn this off so y'all can't see my oh, Facebook. Oh, I pinned it to the muslin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a new one that's... I haven't gone to it, but I've been getting a lot of messages from it. Let's see. Because it seems that there's a lot of um, starter cons that are kind of popping up everywhere, but I'm not sure which ones, you know, are, are good to go to. Um, I know every um, con kind of has their niche. Um, whether it's like an actual convention or a party convention or what have you, so. Let me find the, the main website. That'll be helpful. There we go. Now it's not pinned to the fabric anymore. Yeah, so there's one that's called NerdBot Con. And it's going to be at the Pasadena Convention Center. It's a one day event. I don't know how. How can I get this? They have a website so I can link that as opposed to linking, you know, everyone my Facebook information. That'd be terrible. Possibly. Everyone can say hello. Friends everywhere. Let me close all this. So here's the stuff for NerdCon. I don't know, but I mean, it seems like it's got kind of a nice panel going up. A lot of cosplayers, a lot of really awesome cosplayers. It looks like, like this Loki guy. Awesome. He did have a picture there. He's on all their stuff now, but his costume looks amazing. So I don't know if you guys are interested in something like that if you're in the Pasadena area. It's going to be September 24th, so you've got plenty of time. I just want to point out. Buy your badges. Yep, buy Get your stuff badges. Prepared. Yeah, so like right now, tickets are between $14 and $17. That, so it's a, what I love, it's a cheap con, it's very new. Very I've, affordable. Yeah, I've never heard of this con before. Me either. So but again, lots of new conventions popping up. So uh, Chris plays, he's suggesting WonderCon, which we're going to. That's what this entire thing is about. I'm going to be Marina's at WonderCon. Be there. I will. I'm not at a booth or anything. I'm just going to be wandering around being a nerd in costume. But as I keep telling, oh, here we go. As I keep telling people, um, I'm going to have some goodies on me to give away if you manage to find me and go, hey, I play RO2. Or, hey, I play whatever. You know what? Honestly, I'm going to be really friendly. So if you say, hey, I play Ragnarok 1, or hey, I play Metal Assault, feel free to say something. Any, any one of them. We got Dragon Saga, we got Rose. What else do we got? Dragon Saga, <laughs> Rose, what? Requiem. Requiem, yes, uh, Requiem. RO1, RO2, and now we have our newest game, Metal Assault. Yes, Metal Assault's a lot of fun. Go I, check it out. It's yes. great. For Be one amazing day. Amazing for parties. Yes. That co-op play, though? Super fun. I'm all about the, the zombie. <laughs> the zombie <laughs> mode. Zombie mode's also a great. Movie. Zombie mode. So, um, yes, yeah, so WonderCon, I couldn't get a ticket to Comic Con, 
but I might still like just show up and wander around because there's always tons of stuff to do at Comic-Con that's not even inside the event. Um, WonderCon I'll be there for. Um, and, although, you know, people don't realize Comic-Con's been going on for a long time. I think it's older than Axe. I it, want to say yes, but I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure Comic-Con is a lot older. But, uh, zombie mode forever. Yes. Yes, Dragon Lark. See? Mo- zombie Dragon Lark mode. knows. She's in the know. She knows things. Yeah, so I still gotta figure out, because, uh, I want to go to Comic-Con, and usually I get an industry pass, but I couldn't get one this year. Bastards. No. <laughs> but, uh, what else? So there's the nerd bot. I know I have a lot, a long list of, of cons that I'm going to make an effort to go to. Um, on that note, I mean, I can honestly probably be found in every Renaissance fair in the Southern California area. <laughs> Not that that has anything to do with it. Although, I guess, you know, Ren Fair, Ragnarok, they're kind of in there. You know, except Ragnarok. I think you're kind of making a stretch, but it's okay. We'll give it to you. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. But, uh, what else? What else was I going to say? I don't know. There's all kinds of cool I stuff. I can't read your mind, so I don't know. Why not? I'm well, not, sorry. Don't worry, you don't want to read my mind. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in there. Well, okay. It's probably probably safe that way. I my mind wanders a lot. But it's all good. Yes. Um, I don't know um if this is still going on, but um at the conventions, if people run into you, any special things going on, are they just gonna say run into you, say what's up, or do we have any special fun things? Right now that's pretty much kind of it. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, if, if uh, people want to wear their cosplay costume and we can arrange a meeting maybe Friday at some place at uh, LA Con and I could take lots of pictures, that would be awesome because I love taking lots of pictures of cosplay, all the stuff, all the stuff. Um, that would be, that would be cool. I think I would like that. Yes. Um, I know definitely um, Anime Expo always has a lot of, like, meetups during the events. Yes, official and unofficial. Yeah, so uh, if enough people want to, we can definitely arrange something. Feel free to tell us. Just let us know. Maybe that's something we can post on the forums, get some feedback, see if anybody would like to yes. do. Yes, yeah. and, you know, honestly, if you know, it doesn't have to be RO2 cosplay. Metal Assault... I think we've we've explained has the easiest cosplay of them all. You can go to any surplus store, army surplus store, army surplus store, and just go crazy and probably pick up an awesome outfit for about twenty bucks. Indeed. <laughs> I mean, at most, you might want to just add some flair with like you could be like the white hair with the buzz cut or uh, some goggles. What else do they got? Goggles always look amazing. They do. You know, you can maybe put a little patch that says M.A. on the side. And, I mean, they do have those different armors that, and uh, costumes that change your look, so you can always base it off of That's those. true. Or make your own. It's kind of like RO1. It is. Kind of go crazy. Hello, Razul. Hello there, friend. I, now I forever, I, I, I know that's probably not your point, but now all I can think is Razul. <laughs> well then. <laughs> Do you have a fountain of eternal youth somewhere? That'd be amazing. <laughs> Find Oda at AX again. Is that going to be a thing again this year? I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not going to say that for Oda because uh, I definitely will be very obviously running around and having things to give away. I don't know what Oda's going to be up to. I'm going to let him speak for himself yeah. if he wants to. If he's listening. Ooh, I'm a friend. Hello. <laughs> Everyone's our friend. Why wouldn't you be our friend? We love you guys. Uh, you're a friend. A friend of what? Are you our oh. friend? Are they our friend? Yes, of course. Are. Why not? Yay! Hello, friend. I'm going to say hello, friend in the thingy. Hello, friend. Woot. And uh, again, just to clarify, neither of us are GM, our CM Jello Shaker. If you haven't guessed already, um, 
I am uh, CM Veritas. This is GM Andrasite. Uh, we, uh, you know, we work at War Portal. We make fun stuff, and we are filling in today to make cool things. I don't have a lot of cool things at the moment. Right now, it's all Andrasite, hey. and I feel bad. Hey, you've been helping out. You've been cutting out fabric. You've been hand stitching some prototype things for us. If you want to show that as well, it won't show up as well on here. But I do have the prototype bat wing that we did together. Yay! Together. So. so this is what I did. I made prototypes. I'm like the 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 lazy assistant. <laughs> Not lazy in the least. But. I can I can get a hot glue gun and glue things, lots of things that, that I can do. Fabric glue, it's a thing. It is. I it, always keep some fabric glue in my emergency cosplay repair kit. I actually have some too. I had to use it on my. Um, so I have a Sith costume that I might do as a project as well that I need to fix because I may have gotten a little crazy and now it has a hole in the back and the bottom which is torn to shreds. But I was really lazy, so I just glued the bottom back. <laughs> Hey, it works. <laughs> I'm like, no one's going to see the bottom of this, at least for now. It works, especially if you're in the pin in a pinch. I had one time when I was, I had to do some work at AX, and um, we had to dress up as, in a specific outfit. For whatever reason, it could have been just me, my shoddy, my shoddy sewing at 3 a.m. after staying up for an entire day, or it could just been something else. Uh, my zipper ended up <gasps> busting like breaking Ooh. on my skirt and that is no good because it was only attached by the zipper and a hook and eye which i'm not <laughs> sure if people know what it is it's um if you have any sort of uh outfit that has a little hook that you hook together that would be a hook and eye so mm -hmm. i did have to do some emergency repairs i ended up doing it with a couple safety pins and a little bit of glue held out for the rest of the day so awesome. one thing i would like to suggest to all you cosplayers out there who are new to it always carry around an emergency repair kit because you never know what might happen maybe tiny stapler tiny staplers tiny staplers for anything that's big and heavy very useful and i think i mentioned this early duct tape duct tape <laughs> is your friend um what else are things that all cosplay measuring tapes just in case glue got that a little mini sewing kit that would be helpful um i know you can buy pretty much again at any fabric store or maybe even craft stores i'm checked in craft stores mm -hmm. but you can buy a little tiny kit of needle and thread actually i have one on me right now and that can be very helpful in a pinch sorry i have my giant tackle box of supplies ah! at least yours is organized mine is basically a giant box one side has you know it's She's like, it's not it, that organized. It really isn't. If I could bring it up there easily and show you, I would. The bottom <laughs> is a mess. But um, this is what I'm kind of talking about. There's these little uh, mini like needle and thread repair kits. They usually come with a multitude of thread colors, like you can see here. Sometimes they come with other little goodies, like this one has a safety pin. Some of them you can buy actually come with little miniature scissors, so you can clip your thread. Um, this is something I would also recommend you having on you, just in case. You know, I guess, like we said, you never know what can happen. But oh yes, very I, I, handy. Safety pins, lots of safety pins. <laughs> Keep those on hand. I know whenever I go to Renaissance fairs, I kind of have certain things just pinned everywhere. You can't see the pins, but they are there. Do any of you out there have any cosplay stories? Any things where stuff went wrong or you just had an awesome day? I almost passed out as Kenshin once. Ooh. Wait, you almost passed out? Yeah, so I had dressed up as, again, when I was young and skinny, as Roroni Kenshin. And I still have the costume. Nice. I think it's all floating around. But I was strapped together so tightly because I am not a man <laughs> that... I was standing there and I was trying to get to the cosplay meetup and I started to sway <laughs> my friends looking at me he's like are you okay and I ended up kind of falling over because this is when AX was at Long Beach oh, in one of the benches and just like laid there and he's like are you okay I'm fine you know as I was getting dizzy and it may have not helped I had not eaten that day I was it was a little warm you know AX in the middle of summer, Long Beach. Friends, please remember to eat and hydrate. Yes, and then 
I couldn't breathe. So, note to self, make sure that when you are strapping yourself in, <laughs> you leave room for breathing. <laughs> Indeed. I almost had a very similar story because I incorporated a corset in one of my cosplays. Oh, gosh. Yes, make sure you tie those correctly, especially the legit ones. Otherwise, bad things may happen, like oh, no. not being able to breathe. Yeah, that could be a bad one. That could be a terrible, terrible. I, I have since learned that, you know what? The great beauty of the corset is no matter how you tie it, it's going to form your, your, your body nicely. So it doesn't need to be so tight you can't breathe. <laughs> Indeed. It's, it's already built to kind of form and stuff. Oh, there's someone standing in front of me. Yay. Say hello to the friends. I feel like we need a name for our friends. Special name. So this is in Mendifferent. Hello. How are you doing? You can't see because, again, this is not... Uh, this is not RO2 Lives. This is all about the sewing and making shit. I'm making stuff. Yes. It's okay. We're making stuff. <laughs> but, uh, ooh. Oh, no, it's, it's already 2.02. Oh, well then. Well. I feel like I didn't get anything done. <laughs> you got a lot done. You got. I, I sewed the back and then I started doing <laughs> We got a lot done. I wanted to show our lovely friends how to do the, the wiring and the stuffing, but apparently we won't have time today. Perhaps we can work on it on the RO2 stream. Yes, Thursday. Thursday. Mm. Thursday. We will be back. We will be doing Selfless things. Selfless plug-in. Ah! <laughs> we will be continuing this adventure, and you'll actually be able to see me in-game. Maybe I'll spawn some things. I don't know. We'll see. We always have fun little events in RO2. We do, and I will try not to kill everyone. Kind of. Please don't. I once went to a convention here in the Netherlands called Tuns Tunzacon, and I cosplayed as Grey Fullbuster from Fairy Tale. Ooh. Interesting. And there was a girl who cosplays as Juvia. If you don't know, it's Grey's girlfriend, and we actually got to. Oh, that is so cute! That's my amazing cosplay. That is the oh. best cosplay story. Uh, I love this cosplay story. I do. I don't have anything nearly as cool other than when I was Kinshin. There was a guy dressed up as Sano, and he looked amazing. I got a picture. I was like, you look freaking amazing. But that's an amazing story. That I'm so happy. So, that's, I think that's a great place to end this. Well, I should probably get in the screen, huh? So, thank you for joining us. This is Make, Shit, Make Stuff Monday with CM Veritas, GM Andresite. Thank you for joining us. Please, please come back and see us again. Um, do we have another? Th oh, don't forget, today we have Metal Monday at 5 o'clock. We will be playing Metal Assault. We will be terrible at it. And people will kick our asses, but it'll be fun. It'll be great. <laughs> so thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.